See that? Subtest 2. One of the guaranteed concepts on your CSET is that you're going to have to fill in two or three steps of some kind of incomplete proof, such as this. And there really aren't too many ideas that they can draw from. Um, looking at a parallelogram, it's one of the more likely shapes to pop up because you can draw any kind of diagonal and you get two congruent triangles. So, we're told to draw AC, so we're just going to go ahead and draw that to begin with. And I'm just going to note the given stuff from the beginning where AB and DC, AD and BC. So we have two sets of congruent sides. Now, whenever you draw something down the middle, it always equals itself. So, that's where we're given a freebie. It's the reflexive property, and we could even put up congruence if we wanted. I'll say that's optional. Now, this third guy equals himself. So, so far we're up through the first two steps. What we see is, we have a triangle, and we have another triangle. Oh, and they are congruent, right? So, step three is missing. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go... Triangle A to D to C is congruent. And since I want A to D to C, then I'm going to go A to B to C. Excuse me. If I want A to D to C, then I'm going to go C to B to A. And the reason for this is side, side, side. Triangle congruence theorem, we'll say. You could also just say SSS theorem. Now, the reason for proving triangles congruent is once we prove triangles congruent, we can prove that any smaller part equals its corresponding part in the other triangle, known as CPCTC. That's what number four is about. If you notice, DAC. Angle DAC is congruent to BCA, so this angle, and you should see that end shape right there. Remember, alternate interior angles is always going to be based on the end shape. Well, in this case, it's not actually alternate interior angles, is it? So that's going to be one of the trap answers here. Really, what this is based on, since we have no parallel lines whatsoever, what it's based on is, hey, a smaller part of the triangle equals a smaller part of the triangle because the entire triangle equals the entire triangle. So here, this is a matter of the entire thing equaling the entire thing. And then once you say entire thing equals the entire thing, then you can say the part equals the part. And that's what we're going to say here with CPCTC. One of the more fun things to say in geometry. Um, make up any kind of acronym you want for that. There are uh, quite a few. Uh, I know which ones the students prefer. Now. Number five, to finish this up, well, we know the step after this is to prove the definition of a parallelogram. And the true definition of a parallelogram is we have two sets of parallel sides. Well, we haven't said anything about parallel sides yet. How can we? Well, suddenly we have one set of angles. And if we know these angles we can it, now we know these lines are parallel. By the way, to finish up number four, DCA and BAC will be these two guys, this and this. And again, you see the end shape you develop here. So, what we now know is that AD is parallel to BC, and AB is parallel to DC. The reason that we know these two sets of parallel lines is because of these angles. So, it's going to be a big messy thing, I'll go ahead and write it out. But essentially it's, if angles are congruent, then lines are parallel. And I'll go ahead and say if a transversal cuts two lines and the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And that'll be the true definition for this. Okay? It's the converse of your alternate interior angle theorem. Very well. Step six takes care of itself, and we are done with this proof. We've just answered three questions in the span of, oh, five.
five minutes and four seconds.